Hello, everybody. I'm Father Stephen Imbarato of ProtestChildKilling.com. ProtestChildKilling.com. The featured link is right there. You can check out my website. This video will eventually be on my website. I'm in Dublin, Ireland, and I am in front of the doll. That's what they call the doll. It's spelled D A I L. It is the, uh, the, I guess, the upper house of parliament. The, uh, uh, parliament that passes all the laws here and supposedly just approved the buffer zone law making it illegal to pray even pray and pray silently in front of abortion facilities throughout Ireland of course in the United States this would be ridiculous this would be illegal this would be a violation of our constitutional rights freedom of speech uh, and of course this is an anti-religion uh, law uh, because, of course, it's people of faith, the uh, Catholics primarily, uh, because we're in Ireland, Christians in Ireland praying in front of abortion mills. And again, you could be praying silently in front of an abortion facility, and that would be considered illegal within 100 meters of the premises of an abortion facility. But I'm going to talk today after we do uh, some introductory things. I'm going to talk today about what pro-lifers around Ireland should be doing to counter this uh, immoral, well, first of all, the immoral pre-born mass murder that's going on in Ireland. Then, of course, uh, the reaction by the Irish government to those who want to prayerfully and peacefully protest the daily mass murder of pre-born children here in Ireland. So you see behind me, this is the doll. This is uh, where these laws are passed. This is, a, in my mind, an immoral government, an illegitimate government, and I'll explain that in a second. So again, uh, I'm going to start off by praying the Lorica of St. Patrick. Again, I'm Father Stephen Imbrato of ProtestChildKilling.com, ProtestChildKilling.com, and I'm an Irish citizen. Uh, as a matter of fact, right here, I have my Irish passport right there, newly minted Irish passport, a U.S. citizen, an Irish citizen. My, I, I just uh, actually visited yesterday uh, the home of my grandfather in County Cavan and found out that my uh, great uncle uh, was a, a Catholic priest uh, and actually that I have priests on both sides of my Irish family. Uh, not just my uh, grandfather, but my grandmother on my Irish side, uh, both had Irish priests. And as a matter of fact, the bishop next week, will be talking about Bishop John Conmee. So, uh, yes, I have a, an Irish heritage. I have an Irish Catholic heritage. I have an Irish priestly heritage. And now I am standing here as a Catholic priest. Uh, in the front of the doll, the uh, ruling elite, the ruling body here in Ireland uh, that has uh, sanctioned, it protects, and of course funds a daily mass murder of pre-born children with your tax dollars. Uh, and uh, this cannot uh, continue. We need to peacefully and prayerfully protest this. So in keeping with the Irish tradition, I'm going to take a couple of minutes and I'm going to pray the Lorica of St. Patrick. And then I'm going to talk to you about the preamble of the Irish Constitution. All right, so now the Lorica of St. Patrick, right there. Now, this is a powerful, powerful prayer. It's a prayer of deliverance, a prayer that St. Patrick uh, wrote that uh, hopefully will bring uh, Ireland to deliverance. Uh, will bring Ireland back under uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Blessed Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You see my Catholic hat? This is the, the, the short version of the Lorica, the, uh, the, the core of the Lorica uh, right here. So I have this sweatshirt on, of course, my collar, my Catholic hat, so there's no mistaking what I am. Uh, behind me I have uh, uh, some signs here, Ireland, repent, return to Jesus. Ireland return to the Holy Trinity. Our Irish leaders repent and return to Jesus. 
and of course the preamble of the Irish Constitution invokes the Trinity, invokes uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. But first, the powerful prayer of the Lorica of St. Patrick. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. I arise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through a belief in the threeness, through confession of the oneness of the Creator of creation. I arise today through the strength of Christ's birth and His baptism, through the strength of His crucifixion and His burial, through the strength of His resurrection and His ascension, through the strength of His descent for the judgment of doom. I arise today through the strength of the love of the cherubim and obedience of angels and service of archangels in the hope of resurrection to meet with reward in the prayers of the patriarchs, in the preachings of the apostles, in faiths of confessor, in innocent of virgins, in deeds of righteous men. I arise today through the strength of heaven, light of the sun, splendor of heaven, splendor of fire, Speed of lightning, swiftness of the wind, depth of the sea, stability of the earth, firmness of the rock. I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's might to uphold me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's eye to look before me, God's ear to hear me, God's word to speak for me, God's hand to guard me, God's way to lie before me, God's shield to protect me, God's host to save me from the snares of the devil, from the temptations of vices, from everyone who desires me ill, afar and anear, alone and in a multitude. I summon today all these powers between me and evil, um, against every cruel, merciless power that opposes my body and soul, against incantations of false prophets, against black laws of pagandom, against false laws of heretics, against craft of idolatry, against spells of women, smiths and wizards, against every knowledge that corrupts man's body and soul. Christ shield us today against poison, against burning, against drowning, against wounding, so that the reward may come to us in abundance. Christ with us, Christ before us, Christ behind us, Christ in us, Christ beneath us, Christ above us, Christ on our right, Christ on our left, Christ when we lie down, Christ when we sit down, Christ when we arise, Christ in the heart of every man who thinks of me. Christ in the mouth of every man who speaks of us. Christ in the eye that sees us. Christ in the ear that hears us. I arise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through a belief in the threeness, through a confession of the oneness of the creator of creation. Salvation is of the Lord. Salvation is of the Lord. Salvation is of the Christ. Make your, may your salvation, O Lord, be ever with us. Amen. That is the full Lorica St. Patrick, of course, who evangelized Ireland, brought Ireland to conversion. And I'm going to read a little bit of the preamble now, the preamble of the Irish Constitution, and I'll do a little bit of commentary on the preamble. And again, my brothers and sisters of Christ, I stand before you and I stand in front of the doll. All right, the legislative ruling building here in Dublin, Ireland, with a first-class relic of St. Patrick. Yes, this is a first-class relic of St. Patrick. Now, relics of St. Patrick are not rare in Ireland, but what is rare that they are uh, out for public veneration. Uh, most of the relics of St. Patrick in Ireland are under lock and key and not out, and I was blessed to be given this about 10 years ago, uh, and I do my uh, minor exorcisms, and indeed, after uh, I'm done with this video, I will be doing some prayers here, praying the rosary. I will be also doing prayers. I just did the prayer of deliverance, the Lord of St. Patrick, and a prayer of minor exorcism, and blessing this place to bring about the conversion of Ireland, the people of Ireland, and also the leaders of Ireland. So now this is the preamble of the Irish Constitution. It's very, very short, and you heard me in, uh, uh, invoke uh, the Holy Trinity, invoke our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the Lorica of St. Patrick. 
This is the preamble of the Irish Constitution. 1922 was the independence of Ireland, um, and this is the preamble of their uh, national constitution. In the name of the Holy Trinity, from whom all authority and to whom, as our final end, all actions of both men and states must be referred. So the governing body of Ireland is called to, in their constitution, to uh, submit to the authority of the Holy Trinity and to refer all actions, both of men and states, to the Holy Trinity. We, the people of Ireland, humbly acknowledging all our obligations to our divine Lord Jesus Christ, who sustained our fathers through centuries of trials. And of course, uh, the fathers of Ireland went through centuries of persecution, murders, right? The, uh, uh, the, the, the governments uh, lording over Irish uh, priests, the Irish people, the Irish Catholics. Uh, and this is acknowledged in the preamble to the Constitution. And they were murdered because of Jesus Christ. They were murdered because of their Catholic faith. Gratefully remembering their heroic struggle to regain the rightful independence of our nation. Seeking to promote the common good, prudence, justice, and charity. So the dignity and freedom of the individual, the Irish individual, may be assured and social order attained and the unity of our country restored. Now, my brothers and sisters in Christ, the ruling body here in Ireland is defying in every way this preamble of the Constitution written at the time of the independence of this Irish nation. They indeed defy the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They defy all that Jesus taught. They defy the, the, uh, uh, the, the heroic stands of, of, of the fight for independence in Ireland. And I'll tell you why. Because, because now, just as the, the British for centuries, uh, oppressors for centuries, uh, killed the Irish people, indeed now we have the ruling government of Ireland killing their own people, killing their pre-born, allowing people to vote as to whether your right to life, my right to life, anyone's right to life um, is, is, is warranted, is, is, is uh, uh, allowed. It, it, you know, it, it, it defies the imagination. Imagine, imagine uh, any government allowing a group of people to decide whether another group of people can live or die. Imagine that. It could be the elderly next. It could be the medically vulnerable next. It could be the, the sextons next. It could be the connies next. Right? It could be any group of people that the, that the, the Irish government allows the people of Ireland to decide to kill. There's no right to life. There's no, no inalienable right to life endowed by our Creator, honored in Ireland. So here's what's going on here in Ireland. And again, there's maternity hospitals. Think about that. All right. Maternity hospitals. Mothers are killing their babies in maternity hospitals. That is a paradox that we find in Ireland. A paradox we find in Ireland is people like me, who have grandparents who are Irish. The Irish government encouraging people like me to claim their Irish citizenship, and I did. Meanwhile, the Irish government is killing their own pre-born children. Now, why would they want people to claim their Irish citizenship while at the same time allowing Irish mothers to kill their babies because they have no problem with immigration. They just have problems with the overall population increase on this earth because the bottom line is the government of Ireland 
has bought into this whole environmental lie, this whole um, uh, climate change lie, this whole population reductionist lie, and make no doubt about it, that environmental policy, environmentalism, uh, climate change is all about population reduction. And so this whole pre-born mass murder fits right into that. The spread of contraception throughout the world, uh, the spread of abortion throughout the world, uh, the spread of a euthanasia and assisted suicide throughout the world, even the sexual perversions that we see spreading throughout the world. It's all about population reduction. It's all about reducing the birth rate. It's all about reducing the number of people who are being procreated, reducing the number of people that are living here on the earth. And it's a select few. See, population reductionists, they don't care who dies as long as it's not them. And the Irish government is bought into this, this evil, this immoral, this insidious uh, environmental population reduction mentality. And so, my brothers and sisters in Christ, on one hand, they invite people like me to claim their Irish citizenship. On the other hand, they have Irish mothers who they are paying to kill their own children. It doesn't make sense. The same Irish government that claims to remember the heroes that stood up for Irish freedom, uh, the heroes that died uh, uh, fighting for Irish freedom, the martyrs over the centuries that died because of their Catholic faith desiring Irish freedom and the Irish government is doing the exact same thing to their own people. They're oppressing the Catholic Church. They are uh, taking away freedom of conscience. They're taking away freedom of speech. They're taking away freedom of religion, pushing sexual perversions and of course killing our own pre-born children my brothers and sisters in Christ. So now what should we do about this? What should we do about this? The Irish government wants to set up 100 meter buffer zones around all of these maternity hospitals, these so-called maternity hospitals that, that uh, uh, where ba moms are killing their babies. Well, first of all, every pro-lifer in the country should pray and reflect, pray and ponder in their hearts in good conscience should they break these buffer zones? Should they violate these buffer zones and risk a $2,500 euro fine, six months in jail? I think that they should consider at least receiving warnings, break the buffer zone and receive a warning for breaking the buffer zone. Find out where the 100 meter lines are, exactly where they are. Where is the guard are going to tell you you can legally stand, even though these buffer zones truly are illegal, they're illegitimate, they're immoral. But find out what that perimeter is, that 100-meter perimeter. And then, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I think what you should do is get signs that say maternity hospital, babies killed here. Maternity hospital, whether it be the Limerick Maternity Hospital, whether it be the uh, 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 the Dublin Maternity Hospital, there's maternity hospitals all over the country, uh, and, and, and hold up signs that, that say that, that babies are being killed in these hospitals. And then no one should be afraid to come out and stand outside the buffer zone. Again, some of you may decide that you want to violate the buffer zone. That's a matter of conscience. Uh, indeed, I would hope that the solicitors, the pro-life solicitors, the pro-life lawyers and the pro-life groups in Ireland challenge these buffer zones, challenge the law uh, to get the courts to overturn these illegitimate, immoral, uh, illegal laws uh, that keep people from uh, really praying, praying silently uh, in front of these abortion facilities. Some of the other things you can do, I think, uh, within, again, legal parameters, legal boundaries, is find out where your representatives live. And don't be afraid to protest them in their neighborhoods, in their towns. Uh, don't be afraid to find out where these abortion doctors live, anyone who's affiliated with the abortion industry. And go and, and protest them in their towns, in their neighborhoods. Again, always peacefully and prayerfully. God bless you, dear. Uh, uh, you need to gather together 
groups of Irish pro-lifers, Catholics, Christians need to gather together and look at their situation in terms of these paternity hospitals, these general practitioners, and say, how can we best end the daily mass murder of preborn children? I wanna, I wanna make a couple things very clear. Number one, legalize abortion, wherever it is, Ireland, the United States, whatever country it is, legalize abortion. Is government sanctioned, the government allows it, Government protected by the courts and law enforcement. That's what this buffer zone is all about. And government funded with your tax dollars, daily mass murder of pre-born children. And I'm telling you the single biggest reason why women have abortions. The single biggest reason is because it's legal. It's legal. This government, the doll, our leaders here, moms, I'm talking to all pregnant moms out there, they don't care about you and they don't care about your baby. They want population reduction. They don't care about you and your baby. I am telling you that. Pro-lifers care about you and your baby. The doll, the legislative leaders, don't care about dead Irish pre-born children, and they don't care about sterile or wounded Irish moms. And, I, and, and Irish moms, I'm telling you is all, an abortion destroys women's conscience, destroys them emotionally, and many, many, many women suffer physically because of abortions that they've had. And this is documented all over the world. So the doll, the legislative leaders of Ireland, believe me, do not care about Irish mothers. They surely don't care about Irish babies. They don't care about the, the country of Ireland. They've bought into this new world order, this globalist mentality of population reduction. And so my brothers and sisters in Christ are going to be hearing more from me. Uh, Catholic Voice and uh, others, we are going to be here on July 13th at noontime, July 13th at noontime, we will be here for a full-blown protest. I wanted to come today and our Lord now is shining down upon us. The sun has come out and I thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for that. I am going to be doing prayers of exorcism uh, here after I end this broadcast. I'm going to finish the broadcast by uh, blessing you all with this first class relic of St. Patrick. But please heed my word, share this video, uh, get the word around uh, Father Stephen Imbrato of protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. And I am here in front of the doll uh, protesting government sanctioned, government protected through the courts and law enforcement, government funded daily mass murder of pre-born children and the most recent travesty against the people of Ireland, the babies of Ireland, the moms of Ireland, is this buffer zone around these killing centers, right? I mean, this is the perfect example of how the government protects, all right, the daily mass murder of pre-born children, right? They will throw pro-lifers in jail. You can be praying, they'll throw you in jail. You can stand up and witness to these moms, they'll throw you in jail jail. You can be standing there peacefully. They'll throw you in jail. But these pre-born mass murderers, these these uh, 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 accomplices, uh, all these people uh, that, that are wounding women and killing babies, nothing. They'll protect them. This is evil. It's immoral. In my mind, it's unconstitutional. And the Catholics of Ireland, all pro-lifers of Ireland, People who care about Ireland, who care about the history of Ireland, the heritage of Ireland, need to stand up and peacefully and prayerfully put an end to all of this. May Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, go out today and give them heaven. I'm Father Stephen Imbrato of protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. You'll see me tomorrow. Check out my mass, uh, my homily. Uh, and my lives each and every single day. I love you. Pray for me. I'll pray for you.